I believe it's time to talk the salad of the sea, everybody. Uh, again, three years have passed since we last showcased kelp and everything it brings to the table, and nowadays, it has even more to bring to the table. From hats that feed us milk, to bundles of gifts from our own ilk, I'm here to tell us all once more that kelp might just be the superfood of DST. Let's discuss, or better yet, set sail, as we can't truly start farming the stuff without getting a little wet. All along the coastal ocean, the waters that are right off land mined, groups of six to eight bull kelp lie in wait. But do note that world generations will not always be as nice as they were to me right there. Still, the stuff is everywhere, in pockets of themselves, or just scattered around individually, so we really should not have any trouble collecting some. But should we be using our time to continuously sail out to these found groups in order to harvest the topic of the day? No. No, we shouldn't be, as allow me to turn your attentions to over half of the islands of Don't Starve Together, as both Pearl's Place and the rocky beaches themselves have exactly what we need from here on out, beached bull kelp. Also dotted about the disconnected lunar archipelago islands, this stuff not only gives us the kelp fronds we seek, but a way to actually transplant kelp itself where we please. More on that later, however, as for now, I implore you to hear me out, as we do actually have two additional methods of obtaining bull kelp on the water since the previous video. Cannons obtained via trading with the Moon Key Queen can help uproot ocean-based kelp in the event we're looking for more, and the very same can be said of the Strident Trident here, a unique weapon whose blueprint is dropped by the Crab King and or Loot Stash that will also allow for us to mine on the water at the cost of three uses each time, deal 85 damage per geyser you see here if this spell is used on mobs, can help quote unquote fish loot and or fish themselves by pushing these things towards us and or any land we see, can and will puncture boats, deals 68 damage on the water but only 27.2 on land, and once again, a brute's kelp. Something that the thing didn't do three years ago for whatever reason, and we pointed out, and Clay fixed since. But with that detour behind us, and before we actually get to the nitty gritty, let us not forget that the king of the merms himself will also be able to spew out kelp fronds left and flip and right when offered fish of any sort, so he could just be the best source of it around. Shoot for heavier fish, and you'll even get more of the green stuff as well. So make all the notes. As it's time to break down kelp itself, starting with its unique ability to be a whip of all things. Beached bull kelp becomes a bull kelp stock when looted that will deal 27.2 damage a slap, but at the cost of 2-4% of its freshness each and every time we land a hit. Not only that though, once the things do fall below 50% durability, every hit we land then has an additional 10% chance to just completely break the thing right then and there. So yeah, no. Don't use them like this. Instead, one should look to plant every single bull kelp stalk they can get their hands on, as every single one of them will be worth it. They only take about three days to fully grow, as you can see, and they completely ignore winter, so you'll have them all year round no matter what. And as an added bonus since we last mentioned all this, pushing a planted kelp with a boat all to one corner so that we can potentially harvest dozens upon dozens of them from one location is highly advised. So get to it. Just don't shove them too much into a corner, otherwise you might uproot them yourself. But I gotta be honest, Beard, that doesn't actually seem all that worth it once I actually do look at kelp. What makes them a superfood for my tummy? Well, work players should already know of their stat benefits, I'm sure, but to the rest of us, they are truly just really good veggie fillers when viewed on their own like this. But get to really cooking them specifically, however, and things get interesting. Drying them takes but two minutes time which is ridiculously quick and dry kelp fronds themselves can offer most 1 health, 9.3 hunger, and 10 sanity a pop which is quite noteworthy. Kelp is also essential to California rolls which grant 20 health, 37.5 hunger, and 10 sanity a munch which is very nice considering how cheap the recipe actually is. Barnacle nigiri is another kelp specific dish that is obviously a bit more involved than the previous guy but if you can manage it all you will enjoy 40 health 
health, 37.5 hunger once more, and 5 sanity per bite. Milkmaid hats were also not a thing three years ago, so they make a special appearance here today as a super darn unique crockpot dish that serves as a hat that will give us roughly 4 hunger every 5 seconds over 4 minutes, but at the cost of a sanity drain. Well, unless your work that is, so to continue on a very similar vein here, the sea wreath is now available immediately at the cost of 6 kelp fronds, and it too will drain the sanities of all who wear it by 1.33 per minute, unless you're a fish person. Kelp bumpers are most definitely our freshest addition to the kelp family here, and I wouldn't even be surprised if you had no flippin' idea that they were even in this game. But also craftable straight off spawn for 3 kelp and grass each. They are essentially low level boat armors that help protect against collisions that would otherwise directly damage boats themselves, and can be repaired via more kelp fronds in the event that they somehow survive a crash or two, as you can see. The worked exclusive DIY royalty kit will be needing a whopping 20 kelp fronds to complete it for the resulting royal tapestry there, which is a structure that is needed to ascend a merm to a king of the merms themselves, mind. And last, but certainly not least, Growth Formula makes a rare appearance on this channel, as a single kelp will be needed for a bottle of the stuff as well. Bottled stuff that only looks to get oh so much better as it spoils over time in both nutrient effectiveness and total uses. So what makes it kelp a super you ask? Yeah, I think all of that just answered that and then some. Enjoy it. But hold up, present beard almost forgot yet another thing that past beard did. Ocean debris. To be fair, flotsam in DST is few and far between, and we've only got a 38.5% chance at fronds, or a whopping 0.22% chance at stocks with it, but it is another source of the stuff, so it should be included. And hey, if you want to learn more about this crap, head here, I guess. As there you have it, everyone, a rather wet and unexpected revisit to kelp and all of its green glory. Plenty of new crafts, a set of fresh mechanics, and even a few tidbits of lost information included as well. The ocean snacks are truly worth the effort, especially nowadays, so don't ignore them. And again, if anything, just use them for never-ending vegetable fillers at the end of the day. But thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Welp, it's Kelp, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.